Welcome to the calls of our common frogs and toads. These are calls that you can hear beginning in early spring and continuing into early summer. It's late February, and a warm day finds us walking in the woods. Now, if we're lucky and the timing is right, we may hear the call of the wood frog. Now, that's usually the first amphibian you hear in the spring. Wood frogs spend most of their lives in moist woods, and we don't usually see them. But when conditions are right in late February, the males find woodland puddles and call for a mate. The call is not very loud, and it kind of resembles a faint quacking. Some people think it sounds like two balloons rubbing together. The female wood frog lays eggs in a mass, and when that mass contacts water, it swells up to the size of a fist. Now there's an advantage to laying eggs in a puddle. There won't be any fish there to eat the eggs or the tadpoles. Now they have to develop quickly in the coming months, for if the puddles dry up before the small frogs are developed enough to leave the puddles, all is lost. Wood frogs are not very plentiful, and the time that they call may last only a week. Then they disappear back into the woods. Now by early March, things begin to speed up. If we're near a wetland on a warm afternoon or evening, we're likely to hear the calls of the spring peeper. Now this little frog, about the size of your thumb, has a very loud voice. They may gather by the hundreds or thousands in swamps or wetlands, and when they call together, the racket can carry for miles. The calls of the spring peeper may be heard off and on again through March on into April. The females lay their eggs singly on aquatic vegetation. Now, the peepers are tree frogs, which means they're equipped with little suction cups on their long fingers and toes. And those cups help them climb out of the water, though in the case of the spring peepers, that's usually not more than a few inches or feet. As March progresses, the spring peeper is joined by several distinctively different and not so loud amphibians. The call of the upland chorus frog, another small tree frog, may also be heard in the more open marshes or wetlands. Now, they're not nearly as numerous or as loud as the peepers, but we usually hear a few of their calls, which sound a little bit like running your thumbnail on the teeth of a comb. In March, we may also hear the low snore of the pickerel frog. On a dark night out in a swamp, this sound might be a little scary, but we have nothing to fear from these medium-sized frogs with a very handsome pattern of rectangular spots on their backs. They're often hard to find even when nearby, and they commonly call from underwater. By the end of March, all of these amphibians, with the exception of the wood frog, can be heard if conditions are right day or night. That's when the American toad gets into the act, and they spend most of their lives away from water. They're common even in our backyards, and here in northern Virginia, usually at the end of the first week or early during the second week of April, the toads head for any body of still water, puddles, ponds, swamps, marshes, or lakes, will all find the toads in a breeding frenzy. Their long musical trill may sound like something from outer space, but to many it's one of the most welcome sounds of spring. Their distinctive long strings of eggs may be found even in places like flooded tire tracks on dirt roads. The eggs develop quickly into tadpoles, which in turn become small toads about the size of a fingernail. By the end of April, spring is pretty much over as far as the amphibians are concerned. We begin to hear the calls of the frogs, which may be heard all summer long. The gray tree frog often calls from treetops where they look for insects. They're often mistaken for the call of a bird. Gray tree frogs are very hard to spot. They've got the ability to change their skin color to match the color of the bark of the trees that they cling to.
The Fowler's toad looks very similar to its close relative, the American toad, but it's not nearly as plentiful, and its call is much different. Usually heard near lake shores and river valleys, the Fowler's toad's call can be heard throughout most of the summer. The call of the green frog cannot help but bring to mind sultry summer days at the edge of a pond. Green frogs are never far from a pond, a lake, a river, or another permanent body of water. Finally, the bellowing of the bullfrog is a true sound of summer. That's an indispensable part of the audio landscape of any pond, lake, river, and they're heard by day, sometimes all night long. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this brief summary of the calls of common amphibians of northern Virginia. Amphibians first crawled onto land 350 million years ago, and they were probably the first animals to make a sound on an otherwise silent landscape. And their calling is now one of the most welcome signs of spring and a reassurance of life renewed. Long may they sing. <laughs>